Hi, hi, hi. Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? So I want to give an update on Daryl Brooks. Um, he is the one that drove his SUV through the Christmas parade. Um, this is going to be more updates on him more so than the trial itself. But you're going to also learn about what's going on with the trial along the way, right? So, um, but this um, immediate update is going to be more so about what has been happening with him throughout this trial. So we'll start you right here um, and I'll let them tell you what happened here at the, the first day. Hi there, Andrew. Thanks for having us tonight. Uh, it's it's an eventful day that really is supposed to be a procedural day here in Waukesha. They summoned more than 300 people all the way back to April, knowing that the publicity and really the impact of what happened last November is felt all throughout Waukesha County. What was supposed to be, again, a procedural day had a lot of hiccups along the way. Uh, we counted at least 11 pauses because of outbursts from Daryl Brooks, who is representing himself in this trial, uh, you know, preventing jury selection from actually starting until the afternoon. Today, they only interviewed about 41 potential jurors. Seven of them have already have been struck. Now, to be clear, Judge Jennifer Doro set a decorum order. She limited what we could say, what we can actually record video of, even audio of during this jury selection process. We cannot share with you the details as far as the questions that were asked to these prospective jurors or even the responses. But again, what we can say about today is that it was eventful. After a morning marred with interruptions. I'm not a child, I don't need to be put in a um, holding cell until cooler heads prevail. The efforts by Mr. Brooks over the last few hearings has been nothing but an attempt by him to delay uh, at times to make a mockery of our justice system. Jury selection in the murder trial of Daryl Brooks eventually began around 2.45 Monday afternoon with Brooks, who is representing himself, seated at the defense table in the courtroom next door. Again, Mr. Brooks, I absolutely want you present in the courtroom, but that is for you to decide at this point. Judge Jennifer Doro opted to include Brooks through video chat, muting his microphone during the voir dire process. At times, Brooks covered his head with his suit coat and rested his head on the table, which we can't show you due to media restrictions. In a little less than four hours, the court questioned 41 potential jurors, striking seven for cause by the end of the day. Judge Doro says she wants a pool of 36 so that both sides can challenge or remove jurors as needed. So again, they hope that that process, prosecutors, even Judge Doro herself said they were hoping to have that jury selected today. Instead, it kicks off again tomorrow at 830 Central Time here at the Waukesha County Courthouse behind me. They have about a little more than 60 people coming in tomorrow to go through that exact same questioning process again. The judge said she's looking for an approved pool of 36 people. That way, both sides can strike or challenge certain jurors based upon biases and a couple things to watch out for tomorrow as well uh you know just besides from that questioning the judge will have to rule on a motion from daryl brooks who again is representing himself in the murder trial of daryl brooks uh, who requested each of the 41 prospective jurors interviewed today be struck for cause but i did speak with the waukesha county district attorney susan opper after recess, which came uh, quite late into the evening, about 6.30 local time, she said she expects that jury selection process to be finished tomorrow with opening statements to come on Wednesday. Andrew? You know, Sam, I mean, give us a sense of some of these disruptions. There were 11 today, you counted. Uh, and, you know, to me, it just seems, how are they going to proceed further without more hiccups? Uh, you know, how is he going to stay representing himself if he keeps making these outbursts in court, it seems like it's going to delay it even further. Well, it's a valid question. And I'll start with this. The judge mentioned she has already blocked off virtually all of the month of October for this to happen. She says that's a reasonable amount of time for jury selection for all of the arguments, the evidence, uh, you know, opening statements, closing arguments, even jury deliberations to happen within that time. So she's expecting coming into this, expecting that they'll have plenty of time on the books for that. Uh, but th these disruptions were were frequent. It was everything from, he, you know, he was saying he was a sovereign citizen and saying that he didn't have enough time to go through all of the evidence, all of the discovery, you know, after last week deciding 
to essentially drop his public defenders and represent himself to the point where his actual public defender, who was, a, you know, again, just dropped last week, was called to the stand today to testify, to say, no, he actually did have access to all this. They even called up the Waukesha County Jail Administrator to say, look, Mr. Brooks had all the time he needed all the evidence right there. They gave him extra screen time so that he could hmm. actually go over some of that e-discovery. So the judge mentioned she thought that this was really kind of a delay tactic, as you heard in the story there. Um, so it, it is going to be something to watch, you know, toward the end of this uh, in the jury selection process. Uh, they asked Daryl Brooks if he wanted to come back in to the courtroom, and he said no. He was good where he was, uh, and eventually had calmed down and acted, uh, you know, much more professionally, uh, to put it one way, uh, in, in deciding to strike some jurors. So uh, it, it's just kind of a matter of wait and see. Uh, I, I think the judge, her, her patience was probably tested today, uh, but we're going to see how this goes forward. And it really depended upon how he chooses to act, how he chooses to behave again, at his own murder trial. Yeah, I mean, Sam, it's stunning that, you know, earlier this year, he entered an insanity plea. He rescinded that insanity plea just last month. And now, uh, without any legal training or backing, he is representing himself uh, on really the most serious charges you could be facing, these murder charges, uh, what, 76 charges, six counts of first-degree homicide. So it will be definitely be one to watch. Uh, Sam, we will be speaking again, no doubt, there live for us uh, in Milwaukee. Sam, thanks so much. Yeah, crazy, you guys. It's been crazy. Okay, then it gets even more insane. <clears throat> the next day. Delay in the trial of Waukesha Parade defendant Daryl Brooks. Today he requested the trial be adjourned because he thinks he might have COVID. But the judge denied that request for insufficient evidence. Our Sam Kramer joins us live here in the studio as opening statements should come sometime tomorrow. Yep, Judge Jennifer Doro has just two more matters to decide before moving into evidence. This afternoon, without a jury present, the court set most of its final ground rules, and it's all bringing back memories for a former prosecutor who says the record in this case will be crucial. State versus Brooks, case number 21, CF 1848. With a list of final housekeeping items left to decide. I, I've had people close to me that have passed away from COVID. I'm afraid as hell, Your Honor. Daryl Brooks sought to delay his murder trial, claiming he may have COVID, but after declining a rapid test Wednesday. We believe this is nothing more than a further delay tactic by Mr. Brooks. Judge Jennifer Doro denied his motion and moved on. The court added a jury instruction on decorum, saying Brooks's behavior should not influence a verdict. Neither side can leave their table to present or question a witness. That's because Brooks is shackled at the. I might have to refresh it. Another day, another delay in the trial of Waukesha. Oops. Judge Jennifer Doro denied his motion and moved on. The court added a jury instruction on decorum, saying Brooks's behavior should not influence a verdict. Neither side can leave their table to present or question a witness. That's because Brooks is shackled at the ankles, a fact hidden from jurors. Brooks also received this warning on objections. Or if at any point in time you just simply object to every question, um, that is not going to be acceptable. His actions over the last three days bring back memories for Paul Booker, a former Waukesha County District Attorney. He prosecuted the case against James Oswald, who was convicted in 1995 on charges stemming from a rampage with his son in which the pair robbed a bank, killed a police officer, took a hostage, and crashed her van. Booker says the record will be pivotal down the road given Brooks's behavior. I just think it's planting the errors in the record and doing what he can to uh, set a, a, up an appeal. Tomorrow, the judge will decide whether the faces of victim witnesses can be shown on TV. She'll also wrap up minor tweaks to jury instructions, which Brooks could add to overnight. Mary? All right, and we will be there. Sam, Sam thank you for the update.
Daryl Brooks asked the judge to delay the trial because he is last under COVID-19 protocol. Brooks is accused of driving through the Waukesha on Christmas parade rifles. last year, I mean, that's not killing something six that I people and injuring dozens more. Against. He told the judge... Milwaukee SWAT team a regular visitor to their east side home, but they have done nothing wrong. How a tweet unleashed the... He has lost his sense of smell and is tired. He took a test today to see if he has COVID-19. The judge asked if he'd been take a rapid test, but he refused. The judge has refused to delay the trial. The jury has been set and opening statements are still scheduled to start tomorrow morning. And joining us now to talk more about what happened today in court is attorney Ben Luchin from the law group, Kim and Lavoie. Uh, thank you so much, Ben, for being here with us today. So many things happened today. We saw this trial get off to a, a rocky start on Monday, and it seems like things, the drama keeps going and going and going. What you saw today with Brooks saying, hey, I think I have COVID, but then refusing to get the rapid test. What do you make of that? Well, it seems like another delay tactic on his part. Um, not agreeing to take a rapid test, um, giving different statements from what jail administration has said. It all led the judge to believe that this is a delay tactic and is not going to grant an adjournment for this. And so we find out those results on Friday, I believe, uh, before the show you and I were talking. What does this mean then for Thursday? Will Thursday still be business as usual? Yes, because the courtroom is designed to keep Mr. Brooks six feet away from everybody. Um, so unless there is something that comes up where he's physically unable to participate in his defense, um, the judge is going to make the trial continue to go forward. I'm no body language expert looking at Judge Jennifer Doro there. You can see that she is concerned, uh, frustrated, trying to explain to Mr. Brooks uh, the parameters in which he's able to operate. How challenging is this for her to keep everything in check and above board because one misstep could really derail this entire trial. Yeah, absolutely. It's very challenging for her. Um, she's been very patient. Um, I think in a normal day, in a normal case, um, nobody would talk like that to her or in the court act like this. Uh, she wants to make sure everything is done right and make sure he's treated fairly, um, even though uh, the you know substantial evidence. She wants this to happen once and not have to put the victims through this more than once. Uh, I'm going to ask you to read the tea leaves a little bit in terms of what we can expect tomorrow and for the rest of the week. What do you think will happen? Well, I think she's going to keep uh, saying that he's earning that mute button. Uh, if he can't keep his reactions and objections in check, uh, she's going to mute him and put him in the other courtroom and potentially not even let him cross-examine witnesses if he can't conform uh, his behavior to be civil in the courtroom. Oh, and, and very quickly, she can do that. She has the right to say you're not going to cross-examine because you're not acting appropriately. Yeah, I think that's, she said that today. I think that's the most drastic remedy, uh, but she's put him on notice that you're going to lose that ability if you can't act civil. All right. Ben Luchin, thank you so much. Know your time is valuable. Daryl Brooks asked the Right, well then, <clears throat> it doesn't stop there because then we have today, okay? <laughs> Which gets crazy again. Here's a little, little clip of it. You refuse to answer my question about I mean, whether refuse. you would uh, uh, you go you back to the like jail. To That's you. another interruption. Um, so based on his refusal and his I choice to refuse. come, that's I another interruption based upon his uh, failure to answer my question directly. I will I take that as a non-response, but he came to court that here today. That's another interruption. Mr. Brooks, Brooks, you are now going to be removed to the I other courtroom. To that. I have I'm had a dozen or more interruptions. I will be shock, off the record while we do that. Ankle. Thank you, everyone. Right. Okay. Okay. So then uh, it's, it doesn't stop there. Okay. He then takes his shirt off. 
Yes. In the courtroom. Takes his shirt off. Mr. Brooks be removed from the courtroom due to repeated uh, interruptions and disruption uh, with the court. Uh, this, of course, comes on the recent history with Mr. Brooks on every day that we have been in court since Monday. Um, he has shown a complete and utter disrespect for the simple rules of civility. Um, he has been removed from the courtroom multiple times. This morning alone, he started interrupting this court within a minute of the court calling the case. Um, I should also make a record at, at the moment he is muted uh, because of the way that he was removed from the courtroom and his conduct since. Um, I have been given just a bit of information about it. I will advise everyone that I have required that the Sheriff's Department uh, file a written report with the court uh, regarding Mr. Brooks's conduct. I'm told that um, he would not sit down while in this courtroom in order to have the shackles removed so that he could be taken to the other courtroom that he was resisting. Um, that at one point he took off a shoe and it appeared uh, to the deputies that he was going to throw the shoe. Um, you can see that he is seated with his back uh, to the court or to the camera. He took his shirt off as well. I'm also told that he is threatening to throw and break items. I want to give him headphones since he has uh, claimed in the past to be hard of hearing in one ear, but given his statement that he would throw and break things, um, unless he can pledge to this court uh, that he will not do that, um, I'm not going to provide that information. I will advise that the audio in that courtroom should be turned up accordingly so that uh, it is louder than it has been. I've also been advised that uh, the audio and visual equipment is working in that courtroom. The deputies that are in there can see and hear uh, the court through the polycom system. Uh, today is a little bit different in that there is no Zoom. And so, um, but this court with the uh, blessing of technology in this new building have the ability to call in one room system to the other. That is why we're able to see and when appropriately hear him when unmuted. And then there are the four camera angles that are presently from this courtroom. I have the camera in the other courtroom um, on a single camera since he's the only individual in there. Um, this court has, in essence, extended this courtroom to the neighboring courtroom. While there is ample evidence in the record, not only through the proceedings up to this point, but this morning alone, uh, that through his conduct, he has forfeited his right to be present. I'd also make a finding that he uh, is appearing from that courtroom and that because of the audio and visual equipment and system that we have in place, that it is the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. Um, this court has relied repeatedly on Illinois versus Allen. I've read portions of that case into the record. I don't intend to go through that at length here today, other than to indicate that um, trial judges that are confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula exists for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all ones or in all situations. And in that case, um, there were at least three constitutionally permissible ways for a trial judge to handle uh, a stubbornly defiant defendant, which this court would find Mr. Brooks squarely has become and has demonstrated over the course of these last few days. Um, one option is to bind and gag him. I've already talked about at a previous hearing why I choose not to do that. Um, cite him for contempt. I choose not to do that either. The third is to take him out of the courtroom until he promises to conduct himself properly. Uh, Mr. Brooks today, of course, showed up in court from the jail in his jail attire. Um, he does that by his choice. 
Um, I gave him the opportunity to go back to the jail to put on his suit and tie or other street clothes. He refused to answer that question. Um, this court will continue with this trial as I have previously indicated. Um, there are many resources uh, that have been put into bringing this day to bear and um, it is important for all involved um, that this trial continue. Again, Mr. Brooks is given the opportunity to appear from that other courtroom. At this point, I'm still in the final housekeeping matters. And so he clearly has forfeited his right to be present for that. Um, I will advise Mr. Brooks as I have advised him repeatedly, if at any point in time he wants to come back, and he is willing to promise that he will abide by uh, the rules of courtesy and decorum and be civil um, and show uh, respect for the court proceedings for all individuals in this court room, including Mr. Brooks himself, um, then he may come back in. Um, it's also my intention to give him that opportunity at each new stage. Um, but again, we are in the preliminary stage prior to the uh, jury being brought in. I would note it's um, a little after 9, 9.06 a.m. at all times throughout the court's uh, statements thus far since going back on the record. Uh, Mr. Brooks still appears to be communicating or at least attempting to communicate with someone else. I can see his hands moving. Um, he has turned his back. I can tell that he can hear me because he shakes his head no um, at a point in time where it's clear he's disagreeing with something that I've said. Um, I believe he can adequately hear um, and that his statement earlier uh, in the proceedings that he's hard of hearing is simply another tactic of his to disrupt, to delay, to uh, create chaos. Um, I will further advise uh, Mr. Brooks that his continued behavior, whether it be uh, appearing in court in jail attire, uh, whether it be causing disruptions in front of the jury, that he does all of those things at his peril. Um, but I will, of course, take appropriate steps to limit what the jury can hear, if appropriate. Okay, and then what does end up happening is he does settle down he does end up like saying he's sorry can i come back in um i he says he'll behave that he can use a headset and he won't damage things right and so he gets brought back into the main court um he doesn't agree <clears throat> excuse me sorry he doesn't agree to change his clothing he later explains that that it's because he wants to wait till he gets a negative covid um once he gets that back that it's negative it, then he will consider putting on a suit or his more regular street clothes. Um, but so that's his reason for that. But he didn't explain it at the time. But he um, agrees that he isn't going to damage the headset. So they give him that. He comes into the courtroom. He is actually able to like do do court, like do it pretty eh, pretty okay. I mean, it's still typical some typical things by him. Um, but overall, in comparison to the behavior he was having, it was certainly a lot better. Um, that's for sure. It was a whole lot better. And he was able to actually stay in there. And then she complimented him and told him that he did a fantastic job. And he came in and he was structuring some really good, like, um, questions that he was asking and whatnot, whatnot. So she actually gave him compliments at the end, told him he did a pretty good job. And to just practice, um, you know, with some of the questions maybe um, for future and uh, keep it up. And he explained the outfit situation and the testing and, and all that. And um, they ran late today because of him kind of 
taking forever with cross-examination. But um, yeah, so they start back up again tomorrow at uh, nine o'clock with the jurors and they they start at 8.30, but the jurors come in at nine. So that's been the update on him. It's been a crazy one um, for any of you that have actually followed him and the situation from the time that he wrecked the the entire parade, right? He completely destroyed the whole, uh, it was awful. But yeah, so it's been quite a mess and they think that he's just trying to prolong, postpone the inevitable. And, you know, I wouldn't say that they're wrong. Um, and, you know, he's argumentative and, and whatnot. But so just wanted to bring you that update. But I will um, talk to you guys very shortly. I may be coming on for a live here in a little bit. Um, but if not, I hope that you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye.